Here are the three steps I do every time to identify a heart murmur. Step one, is it systolic or is it diastolic? Step two, where do I hear it the loudest? Is it heard loudest in the mitral, tricuspid, aortic, or pulmonic area? And step three, I always ask myself, is the patient symptomatic with any symptoms? Remember this, heart murmurs are known for the company they keep, and it's not good company. But before we get started, if you're new here, welcome, my name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. So heart murmurs produce a sound through turbulent blood flow, and the murmur is divided into two categories. So you have your systolic versus your diastolic heart murmurs. For systolic murmurs, I remember this acronym, Mr. Peat Man as MVP. So Mr. is your mitral regurgitation, Peat Man is your physiologic murmur, as is your aortic stenosis, and MVP is your mitral valve prolapse. For your diastolic heart murmurs, I remember this acronym, Mrs. Ard. So Mrs. is your mitral stenosis, Ard is for aortic regurgitation. So there are regurgitant versus stenotic valves. So regurgitant valves do not close properly versus your stenotic valves do not open properly. I will be going over five heart murmurs that will include the sound and the three steps as mentioned in the beginning. Beginning with mitral valve prolapse, take a listen. Step one, mitral valve prolapse is systolic. Step two, where is it heard best? It is in the mitral area at the apex of the left sternal border with the mid systolic click, and then later sound is the late systolic click that is loudest with standing and quieter with squatting. Step three, common symptoms are palpitations with PACs that are common with exercise, chest pain, dizziness, and dyspnea. This is common in your patient that is female between the ages of 14 and 30 years of age. Let's take a listen to mitral stenosis. So step one, mitral stenosis is diastolic. Step two, it is heard loudest in the mitral area. And step three, some common symptoms are dyspnea, AFib, right ventricular hypertrophy, or hemoptysis from increased pulmonary pressures. The etiology is typically from rheumatic fever. It can progress into four stages. Stage one is your patient that is asymptomatic until they're about 20 years of age with a sudden exercise intolerance. So this will be your patient that presents with, hey, like I used to run three miles and all of a sudden I couldn't tolerate it anymore over the past year, what's going on? So it's a tip off to do more if it hasn't already been established. Stage two is the onset of pulmonary congestion. Stage three is the development of pulmonary hypertension and stage four is severely low cardiac output. Next sound is your mitral regurgitation. Take a listen. Step one is identified as a systolic murmur. Step two, it is heard loudest at the mitral listening point. And step three, common symptoms are fatigue, shortness of breath, and congestive heart failure. The etiology of this type of heart murmur can be from acute endocarditis, rheumatic heart disease, or a congenital condition. Now let's take a listen to aortic stenosis. Step one, it is identified as a systolic murmur. Step two, it is heard best in the aortic listening point. And step three, common symptoms are angina, syncope that follows with dizziness and congestive heart failure of dyspnea that is one of the last symptoms. The etiology of aortic stenosis can be from rheumatic fever, from a calcified valve or congenital from a bicuspid valve. The onset of age is between 15 to 65 years of age. Now let's listen to the last heart murmur, which is aortic regurgitation. Take a listen. Step one, it is identified as diastolic. Step two, it is heard loudest in the aortic listening point. Step three, some common symptoms are angina, dizziness, chest pain, or heart failure. The etiology is rheumatic heart disease, congenital deformity, or syphilis. The course is usually drawn out where the patient initially may be asymptomatic, then they may experience exercise intolerance. At later stages, they may develop is congestive heart failure as one of the very late stages. 
To me, when I have encountered this heart murmur, it actually sounds like a water hammer pulse. All right, this wraps up my content on heart murmurs. Be sure to check out one of my other videos and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.